This is the brand spanking new iPad Pro. I got the iPad Pro 11 inch model here and the new Magic Keyboard that goes with it. And I got the new Apple Pencil Pro. Is this worth an upgrade? We are going to find out. And you'll be surprised this is not worth it. For some, it might be, but for many, it might not be. Let's dig in. All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ted, I'm a techie, and we talk about anything and everything tech in this channel. And today, I got the iPad Pro, the new release from Apple. I've got the 11 inch iPad Pro, and this one retails about $999. It starts from $999, and the 13 inch model starts from $1,299, the base version. This is the brand new Apple Pencil Pro, and this one costs about $129. And this is the magic keyboard that goes with the 11 inch iPad Pro. And this one costs about $299. And if you're looking at the keyboard for the 13 inch model, that costs about $345. With that said, and before diving in, we'll do a quick unboxing. Okay, let me first unbox the iPad. Out. And I got the space gray version with me. That is how thin it is. Yeah, it's slightly thinner than the previous version. I wouldn't say it's much, but it's slightly thinner. Okay, we got some documentation here. And I don't, I don't see a Apple sticker. Come on, Apple. You need to add those stickers back. All right. Usual iPad charging brick. And this time, instead of white, we have a black USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Okay. Let's do the Apple Pencil Pro. And packaging is the same. Has some documentation and the Apple Pencil itself. All right. It's pretty much cylindrical, but one side of it is flat. And this is where you have the lettering, Pencil Pro. So I think it helps in gripping, right? Okay, let me now unbox the Magic Keyboard. That is it guys, the magic keyboard for the 11 inch iPad Pro. I think we got some documentation inside. Yes, pretty much that. All right, so that is the case itself. And this is an aluminum body. And this is a Space gray color, just to go with the space gray iPad. Yeah. So the bottom is kind of a felt material. It, it feels soft. And the actual hinges and the body itself is aluminum. 
And the top is also feels soft, like a rubber material. Yeah, the keyboard feeling is great. And this is a glass surface touchpad, just like any other uh, uh, MacBooks. Let me boot up this iPad. We got the Apple logo. And we got our usual hello screen. OK, and I'll set this up and do some testing. And I'll come back and talk about how it performs, the pros and cons, why you should buy one, or why you shouldn't buy one. Let's talk about that. OK, let me try to put the iPad in the Magic Keyboard. Just open this app. And we need to align these pin connectors with this. So, so yeah, that magnetically attaches into the back of the case. And also, there's 90 degree. Then it's got some angle going. And the keyboard itself, now once I hit the space bar, it recognizes my face ID and then it opens up the iPad. Now let me bring up uh, notes and try to do some typing. Yeah, the key, it's got some play there, about one millimeter play, and it's good. It feels good. And also, the trackpad is typical of a uh, MacBook. And this one just feels like, you know, the smaller version of the MacBook Air. Uh, yeah. And to close it, let's see. Close. Ooh. Yeah, I'm finding it difficult to open it because there's no, there's nothing to hold on to open this thing. So I'm glad to open it this way. Okay. All right. Opening it up is a little bit of a struggle, but you know, nothing to worry about there. And yeah, this looks fantastic. And it does add some bulk to the iPad itself. And I would say this is pretty much MacBook Air or even thicker than MacBook Air. And there is something interesting in the graphics in this box. There's some lettering but I couldn't quite make out what those are, okay? You look at this graphics, okay? So for me, I'm thinking it is U-P-N-R-O-S. I don't know. If you know, please comment below. And also, I could tell from the graphics they've put in the iPad box. So this image is basically, I think it conveys the dynamic range of OLED screens. You know, it's pretty much dark and you have bright colored naming called Pro. I think that's what it is. If you think about something else, please leave a comment below. Let's talk about what got added in this generation and what got deleted from the previous generation. Um, it's pretty much the same. Now we got our power button on the top, right? And we got our Volume rocker up and down here, and uh, the USB port in its usual location. And we got a four speaker system, two on the other side and two in here. The iPad Air has two stereo speakers, but this one has got four, two on each side, which gives much better sound than the iPad Air. And if you look at closer to the camera, we are losing one camera, which is the ultra wide uh, uh, camera. There's only one camera in this generation, both in the 11 inch model and the 13 inch model. So there is no two camera system in this generation. Come on, Apple, why do you do this? And also the Apple Pencil, you know, magnetically sticks on to this side and gets charged just like the previous generation. Speaking about the price, now the 11 inch Pro model, starts from 
dollars. And the 13 inch model starts from $1,299, $300 more than this. So that's a $200 bump on both these models from the previous generation. The previous generation started at $799 and uh, $1,099, a $200 bump. Is the $200 bump worth it? Let's find out. Looking at the front of this iPad, you can see that the selfie camera, which used to be here in this corner, has moved over to the landscape position over here. Just like the base iPad, Apple has listened to the users and, you know, hey, this is a welcoming change. Kudos, Apple. And it also comes with a center stage AI technology. And the Pro models also has the true depth camera system. Um, it gives a lot more bokeh uh, on the background than the iPad Air or any other iPads. Uh, so that's an advantage. And also, since the camera is in the center, in the landscape mode, whenever you're doing a Zoom call or a video uh, conference call, uh, you're looking straight at the screen and not to an, to an angle. So that's a, that's a very welcoming change with this model. And the star of this iPad is basically the screen. The display, they're calling it the Ultra Retina XDR display this time instead of the liquid retina display from the previous version. And it's got the ProMotion technology and it's got a P3 wide gamut, color gamut, true tone technology, and an anti-reflective coating on it. With this generation, there is also a nano texture display glass option that's only for the one terabyte storage version and the two terabyte storage version. Okay, you get you can get a nano texture display uh, that kind of you know reflects less light and uh, it'll be better in uh, you know areas where especially in the outdoors uh, when you're using the tablet you won't get much reflections out of sunlight or whatever and the screen will be readable much more uh, but it comes with the cost all right let's talk about what what's inside in terms of hardware. Now we know that uh, this one comes with an M4 chip in it. Apple could have named it M3. Basically, it's an M3, but you know they they monikered it M4, and the iPad is the first one to get an M4 chip in it. Basically, an M3 chip. Come on, Apple. What is changing in the M4 chip? Basically, the M2 chip, the previous version had eight core CPUs and ten core GPUs, sixteen core neural engine. And with this new version, we're getting nine core CPU, 10 core GPU, and the same 16 core neural engine. And there's also a version, uh, when you opt for the one terabyte and the two terabyte option, uh, it comes with 10 core CPU instead of the nine core CPU. So it's much more better um, than the base model. And in terms of storage, now the base model, we're getting 256 GB storage. The previous model started with 128 uh, GB storage. The, the storage has doubled in the base model, which is, which is nice to get that storage space. And it goes up to two terabytes, just like the previous version. And speaking about the RAM, both 11 inch and 13 inch models comes with eight GB RAM. And if you bump up to the one terabyte and two terabyte version, you're getting 16 GB of RAM. That's, that's a lot of RAM. It's almost, you know, a desktop level of RAM in those models. So talking about the dimensions, it's pretty much the same with both 11 inch and 13 inch models. Um, the uh, width and the height are pretty much the same. You're losing a couple of millimeters, that, but that's it. But the thickness, the previously the 11 inch model was 5.9 millimeter thick. And this time it is 5.3 millimeter thick. And the 13 inch iPad even goes down to 5.1 millimeter. So in terms of weight, uh, this is losing about somewhere about 20 grams. So previously it used to be 466 grams, and now it's about 444 grams. And it'll be a little heavier when you opt for the cellular version because you know those circuitry gets added into it. And um, the resolution of the screen is pretty much the same. Previously, it used to be 2,388 
by 1668. Now it is 2420 by 1668. Uh, we've gained some pixels on the length wise, but uh, they're maintaining the same pixel per inch, you know, which is 264 pixel per inch for the 11 inch model. And I guess it's the same for the 13 inch model too. In talking about the brightness, that's where, you know, the OLED screen is super bright than any other screens on the iPad yet. The previous model uh, had a max brightness of 600 nits, and this one has about 1,000 nits. And it goes up to 1,600 nits, peak brightness in HDR content only. And one addition, one hardware addition in terms of media engine is uh, this generation, suppose AV1 decoder. So we have hardware decode for, you know, the streaming video services uh, format. AV1 is a new format for Netflix or YouTube, you know, those get decoded in the hardware. So you can save battery life with that. Now the battery life on this, uh, they're claiming the same amount of battery life, which is 10 hours of surfing the web on the Wi-Fi or watching video, or up to nine hours surfing the web or watching video using the cellular data, if you got the cellular version of it. Okay, let's talk about the changes with the Apple Pencil Pro. Now, this one has got a squeeze function now. And basically, you can squeeze this, and uh, there's something called battle roll, you know, something like this, and a haptic feedback. Uh, this has got now haptic feedback. And also this version of the pencil is getting Find My support. So you, if you lose this pencil, you can find it out with uh, your Find My service with other Apple devices and try to locate this, which is cool. Okay, let me show you how the squeeze function works. Now in the settings for pencil, they go in there. You see the item here for squeeze function. Okay, when you get to those options, you can set all of these for the squeeze function. Basically, if you are doing a drawing program, you can bring up you know color palettes and things like that. And also you could do a shortcut to bring up an app. So let me set up to shortcut. And then let's say I choose clock. And you can choose an app and also what function to do on the app. So, you know, uh, and I choose, let's say clock and then set a timer, okay? So I've now set that up. And whenever I do a uh, squeeze, it gives me a haptic feedback, a really good feedback saying I, I really squeezed it. So I can feel the click uh, in my finger, click. And then there comes the timer set up your timer. So this squeeze function is brilliant. And as usual, you know, the pen goes into the side for both charging as well as pairing. So it stays there. Okay, the star of the show on this iPad is the screen, the OLED screen. Oh my God, the screen is amazing. Now this one has got uh, two million to one contrast ratio, and the screen is just amazing. My jaw dropped watching this screen. Uh, just for comparison, I've got two more iPads here. Um, the base model, 10th generation iPad, and a 9th generation iPad. So I got all three iPads. This is the ninth generation iPad, the base iPad. This is the 10th generation base iPad. And this is the new iPad Pro. And immediately I can say that this screen is brighter and uh, the contrast ratio is amazing, amazing. <laughs> There's no word to explain this. You need to, you need to see the screen in person to, oh man. This is, this is great. Now, the iPad 9 screen is a bit washed out, I would say. Um, 
it's a good skin. The both the base iPads do, do have all the colors, but you know, sometimes uh, the contrast ratio is missing. That's where the OLED, OLEDs uh, shine. And this screen is just amazing. And the other things to talk about is that uh, we get the Face ID only with the Pro models, and none of the other iPads uh, support the Face ID. And we got Touch ID in uh, the iPad Air, but only the Pros has the Face ID. And talking about the cellular and the Wi-Fi hardware, it's basically the same, pretty much the same. We got the Wi-Fi 6E, and, and I wish Apple could have moved to Wi-Fi 7, which got released a long time back. But no changes in that area. It's Wi-Fi 6E and uh, Bluetooth 5.3. It's the same from the previous generation. And one other change uh, with the cellular version is that uh, we used to have a uh, the SIM slot, but that's gone now. Uh, it's only eSIM with any of the iPads now. And as with the Pros, uh, the USB-C connector here, this is also a Thunderbolt port so you get 40 gbps uh, of bandwidth with this so when you connect a um, you know like a fast drive like an nvme drive you can get all those speed uh, with this connector none of the other ipads have that kind of uh, a bandwidth now speaking about that one thing that apple is still not giving us is the video output from the port directly. Now we still need to use a external adapter for getting video out, either it be HD through HDMI or display port or you know uh, VGA. They've got dongles to do that. Come on, Apple. Yeah, it's just a matter of putting a chip in there. You know, instead of having those chips externally, put the chip inside. There's a lot of space in there. You know, plenty of space. Come on, Apple. All right, so that's pretty much we get in terms of updates with this generation. And let me go ahead and, and do some benchmark testing and come back and look at those numbers. Be right back. Okay, I'm back with the scores, guys. I ran Geekbench, both CPU, GPU, and Apple is selling these devices big on AI and machine learning. So I also ran the Geekbench Core ML benchmarks. That's for machine learning performance okay let's take a look at the scores the single core scores are now 3724 versus the previous generation which is 2534 which is an amazing 47 percent performance boost on this ipad which is just amazing on the multi-core score I got 13,371 versus 9,622 for the previous version, which is a whopping 39% performance improvement. And talking about the GPU performance, this time I got uh, 53,888 versus the previous generation, 45,135, which is a 19% improvement in the GPU performance. It's not bad at all. And talking about the Core ML benchmarks, now we could run Core ML benchmarks on the CPU, GPU, as well as the neural engine. You know? So uh, on the CPU, the new score is 4,731 versus the older score 3,447, which is 37% improvement. Which kind of aligns with the multi-core performance, you know, almost uh, the multi-core performance was 39% improvement. In the ML workload, it is 37%, which is, you know, amazing. And uh, talking about the GPU, using the GPU for ML, uh, I got a score about 6,839 versus 5,472, which is about 20% uh, performance improvement which kind of aligns with the GPU performance as well. And uh, doing this on the neural engine, uh, I got a score of 9,463 versus the old 7,335, which is about 29% improvement on the 
using the neural engine for ML workloads, which is amazing. Okay, now let's talk about who this iPad is for and why you should buy this Pro model. Unquestionably, the screen. The OLED screen is amazing. So that's one reason uh, to buy this iPad. The screen is gorgeous. If you want an OLED screen, then this is what you need to have. What are the other things? Faster CPU, GPU, and neural engine. Yeah, we saw the scores. Amazing performance improvement in those areas. And also, the selfie camera is in the landscape oriented mode which everyone likes. And also this version is also capable of uh, doing a 4K airplay to the Apple TV. So that might be useful for some people who want to stream 4K directly from their iPad to an Apple TV. That's capable now. What are the cons and who should not buy this iPad at all? Yeah, there are a few things. This is not a perfect iPad at all. So the first thing is there's only one camera now. There used to be two camera, ultra wide camera is dropped from this model. If you if you want that ultra wide camera and you're used to you know zooming in without losing any image quality, then you won't get this with these generation models. It is better to go to the previous generation model. Okay. And the other thing is no display port out or video out directly through the USB-C port, even though it is capable of the Thunderbolt 40 gigabytes per second bandwidth. Come on, Apple, put that chip inside this iPad. I know you can, we don't need to buy dongles, okay? And also, let me show you something. So the glass I'm wearing now is the Radio AR VR glass or goggles, whatever you call it. And this one has a USB-C port, I can plug this into my computer and uh, use this goggles as a monitor, an additional monitor. And I can do this with any other Android devices as well, because you know, Android devices can output video directly through their USB C port, except for those iPads. Okay. If I plug it in, I get nothing. So come on, Apple, give us the video out in the device itself. And if you want to know more about uh, this glass goggles, you know what to do, right? Subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon. I've got a review coming up soon for these glasses, and these are amazing. Do not buy the Vision Pro from Apple. For one tenth of the cost, this one is amazing. You know, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Okay, the other thing. You might not want to buy this is this is a OLED screen and it is prone to screen burning. The OLED technology has gone a long way, but you know the screen burning issue is still there. It depends on what content you're watching. If you are using this iPad for gaming and you got static content everywhere and you know and you play games um, hours and hours the screen burning is going to be an issue. In fact, I've been using an OLED LG 4K 48-inch TV as my monitor for the past two years, two and a half years. It works really great. And I've been using it like more than eight hours every day. It has not given a problem in the past two years. So it might cause a problem in the future. But yeah, I went into it knowing that hey, OLED, there is a risk of screen burning with OLEDs. Burning is an issue with OLEDs, and that's why Apple has been hesitating to add OLED screens to their laptops. Hmm. We might get OLEDs on the MacBooks too. We need to wait and see. Another thing why you might need to avoid this is this is 200 bucks expensive now, okay? And uh, if you're choosing the 13 inch version, the base model with 256 storage starts from $1,300, which is going into the laptop MacBook territory. You could very well buy a MacBook Air for that price. MacBook Air comes with 13 inch screen version as well as 15 inch screen version. 
and it has a better battery performance 16 hours of battery performance instead of 10 hours also when you start adding the smart cable this is going to get bulkier than the macbook air so macbook air would be a better option for some who doesn't need the touch functionality and if you want the touch functionality you are an artist you are a uh, drawing artist absolutely you know this is the best uh, ipad you can get and you can't do that with uh, uh, with a uh, macbook but for most people in that money you know it is going into that macbook territory and for most of the people macbook would be a better option and choice and also in terms of application they can run there are much more options with a macbook rather than an ipad and even the hardware is terrific on these ipads it's getting better and better and better in terms of hardware the ipad os is is kind of letting it down there are no apps in the ipad ecosystem to take advantage of the hardware performance in here that might be coming soon in the ai era but we are far away from that but right now the hardware is an overkill for the apps and the very important reason not to buy this there is no apple sticker included in the box <laughs> yeah there's no apple sticker i'm just kidding if you are interested in purchasing any accessories for either the 11 inch or the 13 inch ipad pro or the ipad airs i've curated a list of quality accessories and gears like cases screen protectors and things like that all of them are in the description below and some of them are affiliate links for your information and that is it guys that's my review of the new m4 ipad pro don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon so you get notified whenever a new video drops and also please leave a comment below tell us if you would purchase this ipad or what are the reason you would skip this thank you guys thank you very much for joining